is a what I believe to be a super sun glow or super hypo sharp albino arabesque. This is that crazy pattern that's arabesque. It looks very clean. Arabesque usually has a lot of you know granite, gravelly, granity looking stuff, but the super hypo will clean that up. And it's 66% head RDR black eyed annery. What's up, Snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. Missed a video yesterday, but I filmed a lot of footage. I just haven't put it up yet. We're going to go into my snake room, or we went into my snake room yesterday, and we're going to take a look at what was going on because I was looking at some really cool boas. And I realized, you know what? I got to put some of these boas up for sale or make them available to people because they're really great uh, snakes that were born earlier this year. They're ready to go. They're eating really well. I also have some carpet pythons that are going to be available. I showed you some carpets on uh, two days ago's video, but these are pretty cool from a last year clutch and they're uh, rock solid, eating great. And these things might interest you as well. As well as, you know, you never know what else I might throw into the video. Stay tuned. All right, checking out a nice clutch we had earlier this year. This is an orange dream pastel and she Krypton that is head ultra male. Krypton, you can see that little big ear stripe behind the last ear there, behind the, excuse me, behind the eye. And this is 100% head ultra male, so there's a lot of potential here. It's already really clean and really orangey. So I can only imagine what this little boy will produce when we get him into a clown, because remember, clown is a Lelic to Krypton, so this is a visual Krypton. And so he's got one copy of clown, one copy of cryptic. And so we can breed him to like a ultra male clown or something like that and produce some really, really nice stuff down the road. All right, here's a little update on our rhino rat snake female. So this is the little one we have that used to be tan and now is turning green and even a little bluish. Now, this is a blue line rhino rat snake, supposedly. As you can see, it has that beautiful red eye. It has that horn. It has that horn is where they get the name rhino rat snake. And as you can see, the coloring is coming in here. We're getting greens, we have little blues. There's still some tans in there from, because when they're babies, they're very tan looking. And she's eating really well, according to Pablo. He's feeding her every week. I think she's eating like two, two fuzzies now. So pretty soon we'll have her in a nice display cage. Maybe even the same one as her uh, as the male. I don't know. We'll see. But she can go on a smaller one because she's she's much she's much more petite. Doesn't need as much climbing space at this point. But uh, I, I I don't think I'm going to keep her in this much longer. Originally we put her in here because she was escaping from every place else because she was so small that she would slip through the cracks. These are the only ones that were tight enough that we that she couldn't get out of, so that's why we have her in here. All right, here's our uh, Nelson's Milk Snake. This is an albino, T-negative albino, splotched. Splotched is, uh, it, it's lost its stripes and it's got these like big columns of splotching or striping almost. She's gotten really nice as she's gotten a little older. They're a little, a little crazy looking, uh, uh, crazy moving, I should say. So it's hard to capture them, so you don't really want to get them too startled or going, but uh, getting much, much bigger. It took a long time. They're slow growers, that's for sure. And they're eating bigger prey items now, so they're starting to really grow. So this is our female. And we're going to take a look at our male. We have a male that's T positive, actually. And he's really nice as well. He's a T positive splotched, uh, head splotched. So he has the typical striping of the milk snake. He's T positive, so you can see he's got, he doesn't have any blacks in him, but he still has some browns. And that's because he doesn't have all the melanin gone, he only has some melanin gone, whereas the female had all the melanin gone, all the blacks. And uh, he carries the gene for splotch, but he's not a visual splotch, because splotched is a recessive trait. So. When we breed him to her, we'll have 50% of the babies will be splotched. Now, the good thing is that the T-positive albino and the T-negative albino are what we call allelic to each other, meaning that 
you only need one copy of each to produce something. So if we have, if we produce, if we breed them together and we get two copies of T positive, we'll get a T positive. If we get two copies of T negative, we're going to get a T negative. If we get one copy of T negative, one copy of T positive, we're going to get um, an intermediate. And we're going to get an allelic combination. And that's going to be really cool. So I, uh, I'm excited, but we still have a while to go before these guys get a breed. And miles to go before we sleep, and miles to go before we sleep. Name that poem. This is a really interesting uh, carpet I produced in 22 last year. This is an albino, caramel albino, so it's got two of them. I'm pretty sure it's a super form of it. So I think it's a super caramel albino. That's what I'm calling it. Because it looks very snow-like to me, but it's definitely not a xanthic. It's not a snow. It doesn't look like a snow, but it has, um, I, I, I think, you know, once again, I'm not gonna know until I prove it out, so I'll probably wind up holding it back. It's one of the nicest looking albinos I've produced in terms of, you know, how reduced the, the pattern is. And that's why I'm thinking, if it was snow, it would be more white. So it's got more yellow. So I think it's, it's a, I think the azanthic gene is not there. It's 66% had, had, had azanthic. So we could still nail the, hit the azanthic if we breed it to something else. But I think the reason why the pattern is so um, diffuse is because it's a super caramel and it's an albino at the same time. So certainly something I would be interested in breeding because potentially it would help us get closer to that moon glow, uh, especially if we if it proves out to be head asanthic. So we have two copies of caramel in it and one copy, and the two copies of the albino in it already. So we'll see. She, he just shut out, or he, she, I don't, I don't think we've even sexed this one yet. I just kind of put it in the rack and, and I just love it. You said up. All right, here's another litter mate of the one I just showed you. This is probably caramel. I don't think it's super caramel. I'm, I had list, listed this as caramel, 66% het moon glow, which is 66% het for albino and 66% het for uh, azanthic. Now, all of these snakes look completely different because they've hit a year old, they're over a year old actually, and they've gotten their, they've gone through that ontogenetic color change. So they all look really different. Let's put this shed out. And they all are getting much, much lighter looking. Carpets when they're babies are much darker and they, they get their true colors at about a year old. All right, here's another litter mate. This is a caramel at 66% het moon glow. So once again, a moon glow is a caramel albino azanthic. So this is 66% het for albino and azanthic. It's a visual caramel. When you have a super caramel albino azanthic, that's known as a full moon glow or full moon, they call it. And that's pretty much a white, white snake. And in carpets, that's very rare. I have yet to produce a pure white snake. I have some that have some very light yellow pattern on them. because they. And I have one that I think could be a moon glow. Not a full moon, but a single copy moon glow. This is uh, something that could definitely, is very cost effective if you guys want to pick something like this up and get into the moon glow project. If you hit the odds and you, you prove out for albino and azanthic, you're going to some really nice snakes. This is really nice looking boy or girl. I don't think we've sexed these either. This is around the age you really want to sex them because they're a little more bulletproof. All right, now we'll look at a few boa babies. Since we're checking cages, Pablo's feeding, I'm kind of like doing spot cleaning. This is a what I believe to be a super sun glow or super hypo sharp albino. Arabesque, this is that crazy pattern, this arabesque. It looks very clean. Arabesque usually has a lot of, you know, granite, gravelly, granity looking stuff, but the super hypo will clean that up. And it's 66% head RER black eyed annery. Beautiful little boy. He is about nine months old. He's got some nice size on him if anyone's interested. This would make a great, great breeder down the road, great pet. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous, very clean looking sharp albino, obviously with a lot of potential if it does prove out to be 
pet for RDR, Black Eyed Annery. Look at this beauty. This is also another possible super sun glow, super sharp sun glow that is. Um, really, really a lot of pinks in her. Very dispersed pattern. I think this is arabesque too. It looks like the arabesque patterning. She's also 66% het for RDR Black Eyed Annery. Another really, really nice looking albino. Look at these guys. I love that arabesque connecting pattern. Very, very dispersed. And I love the way the Super Sun Glow really, or the Super High Blood Gene, I should say, two copies of that really clean that snake up. Beautiful. Same litter as I just showed you with the 66% head Black Eyed Annery. Here is the a visual we hit, super hypo, sharp albino, black eyed annery, also known as a super blizzard or super hypo blizzard. It's the most white snake in all of boa breeding. It's the holy grail, if you ask me, in terms of if you like white snakes, it is just exquisite. This is a perfect, perfect representative of a blizzard. This is a beautiful female. If anyone is interested, she is available. Uh, I haven't listed her anywhere, but I don't mind keeping her, so <laughs> she's not going to be uh, a cheapie, that's for sure. But I certainly, you know, if you want to put the crown jewel in your collection or have a, a truly white snake, I mean, this is something you can show to your friends. Hey, no one will deny this is not a gorgeous, gorgeous snake. And we'll even, let's take her outside for a little, a little jaunt, so to speak. She's that beautiful. All right, there's our super hypo blizzard outside here, holding on to this little tree branch. This is my little pile of, of wood I saved to fuse for our naturalistic enclosures. And she's just holding on there in the beautiful sunlight. She's looking absolutely gorgeous. Um, you can see how crystal white she is. There's not a single blemish on her anywhere. She's just exquisite. They're the, Really, when I, I can't get enough, I love white snakes. And there's something about a white boa because they're just not that common. You don't see a lot of them. In ball pythons, you see a lot of white snakes, but in boas, you just don't. This is the, and this is the whitest. And I love super fire diamonds because they're black, uh, leucistics. They got the black eyes and they're white, but they have yellows in them and they do have a little bit of black pigments here and there. So they're not as clean as this snake. This snake has got zero pigment, zero pattern, and it will never ever change from the way it looks now. All right, last snake of the day. Beautiful Aztec Sharp Sun Glow boa. So that's a hypo albino of the Sharp line. But as you can see, if you really look really closely, you'll see like blue tinges in the snake. And that is because this is from my blue line Sun Glow male that I bred to an Aztec. Let's see back here went to an Aztec Sun Glow and we got this snake it's not got a lot of, it doesn't have a lot of blue in it but it has a blue tinge because the male the daddy was really blue and now we have that into Aztec and I think that this snake might be a holdback because it's just looking so beautiful and it's taken off into the sunset Go find bigger, better places to be. Dum da dum da dum da dum da dum. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you like any snakes in there, feel free to reach out. I'd love to talk to you about them, uh, educate you, and help you make decisions. Uh, it's all on the table, and. I have um, some more exciting stuff coming up later this week. I will keep you guys apprised of that when it happens. And uh, I, have more, I have more cages coming in. I have not completed the uh, display racks yet. I'm close, I'm close. And of course we still are working on, I gotta talk to my friend Chase with my uh, water monitor enclosure that he's working on as well. So a lot of exciting stuff going on here. The breeding season's coming up. We're gonna start pairing up snakes probably in another month or so. And uh, we're gonna do it all again. All right, guys, if you love what you're seeing, show me the love. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. Hit that like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.